Good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Amin Joyo, a research associate in Sindhabhyas Academy, part of Social Science Department, Zebes University, Karachi. Uh, we have a beautiful library. I don't know if you have seen or not. Uh, but we have more than 3,000 books on different disciplines of Sindh, uh, like irrigation of Sindh, agriculture of Sindh, history of Sindh, art of Sindh, architecture of Sindh, literature of Sindh. So before formally starting this uh, event, I would like to invite you all that you can come uh, for the research purpose or uh, issuing any books from our library. Uh, this is our uh, brochure. I will hand over to you. So, so basically today we are gathered here uh, regarding a book launching uh, ceremony. The book is in my hands. Its name is America. Gisar means the memories of uh, America. The author of this book is among with us, uh, Mr. Munis Ayar Sheikh, son of a legendary poet of Sin. Uh, but first of all, I would like to introduce and invite uh, Ms. Nafisa Hudbai with us. Uh, she was the staff reporter uh, for the English Daily Dawn News. And from 1984 to 2000, she was there in uh, a Dan newspaper as the only woman reporter under Zia regime in Karachi, Pakistan. She went to write thousands of news reports and lead, leading articles on nations, transition, and dem democracy. Please welcome her with your clappings. Please welcome her. Uh, the next speaker and author of the book. I would like to request Mr. Moniz Ayaz Sheikh to come on the stage and join us. Yeah. Now, it's our practice that we start our events uh, with the why of Shab Lati Bhattai, but uh, as the occasion is a uh, uh, book launch ceremony of Mr. Moniz Ayaz Sheikh, so I would like to request my uh, research associate and colleague, uh, Mr. Saran Jo, to come on the stage and sing the sweet why of uh, Sheikh Ayaz. Please welcome him. Dharti jite maapur jaan, tehte nimun ji chhaamami, aazad ghi ja pijo, kuj jaama moj naomi. Raat aai vai, tu na aai kahi, Maakame mendhera ka karun di rahi Raat aai vai tu na aai kahi Maakame mendhera ka karun di rahi Ho vanya ma vanya kiya bhe Sir, I 
कह न जा तो तछो रत वडिया उडियो सिंध दिसंदी रही रत वडिया उडियो सिंध दिसंदी रही रात आई वही तू नाए कही माक में मेंधरा का करू दी रही माक में मेंधरा का करू दी रही थैंक यू वेरी मच ही वॉज माई कुलीग मिस्टर सारंग जोयो नाउ आई वॉन्ट टू लेट यू नो अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट दिस बुक Uh, basically this is written about the memories of america when uh, mr monis ayaz uh, sheikh was there uh, regarding uh, uh, research study and uh, he was doing phd over there further he will tell you more about this but first of all i would like to request madam nafisa hudbai to come on the stage and speak about this book and one important thing is that this book is dedicated to her so please uh, clapping for her please Gee, I was uh, really pushed by Munis to come and speak because today is, uh, as you know, November fourth, and uh, our digital media is going to be broadcasting the U.S. elections. Uh, so, but I thought because Munis insisted, therefore I have made it a point to come here. Uh, The book is all about nostalgia. It is looking into the past. It is looking at uh, the way America was. America is has changed a lot. In fact, after today, it will change even more when a new uh, president is elected. But uh, to talk about nostalgia, uh, I would say that because Munis was so close to Javed Bhutto. he would frequently talk to him on the telephone and revive his memories of the america that he remembered um in this book uh, there's a particular chapter dedicated to javed which talks about him as being the socrates of sindh and uh, i totally agree with that because javed was a person who was flowering and as you know wisdom comes with age and javed became even more wise as he grew older he was talking to people in sindh he was trying to give them their uh, sense of direction uh and as munis writes in his uh, article uh wisdom comes at night this is what hegel has written hegel has written and javed was the kind of person who would sit up at night and read and that's where he was getting his wisdom from so uh to call him the socrates of sindh is a very big compliment and honestly if his soul you know rotates goes around here he would be thrilled that his good friend remembered him that way like all good people uh, javed was a sufi and uh, he used to say to me that if we are good with people they will be good with you and that is the reason that we chose to stay in a african american neighborhood thinking that if we were good to them they would be good to us but on the 1st of march 2019 this terrible incident happened which has still left me in a state of shock because the javed i loved and with whom i grew is now gone but let me tell you that he is very much a part of us uh I have carried on his legacy. I have created a digital media which is called JB Connects which is now trying to connect people in Sindh, 
trying to connect people throughout the world, actually. And uh, that is carrying on his legacy. Uh, I have not uh, really thought very much about this uh, speaking experience. But one thing I did read in uh, Munis's article, which is that before Javed was born, uh, the person who was born and died was named Sikandar. And Sikandar, as you know, is Alexander. It's good that Javed was named Javed because Javed means Zinda o Javed. Javed was no Alexander. He was not a fighter, but he was a thinker and a fighter from his heart and his mind. I would like to congratulate uh, Munis because I have not spent a lot of time reading this book. It's in Sindhi. My Sindhi isn't that strong. But uh, I'm really grateful to him for having dedicated it both to Javed and myself. And I congratulate you once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Nafisa, uh, for your time. So now I would like to request uh, uh, Sir Imtiaz Kazi Saab, who is our uh, Vice President of HR and Administration. And he also went through his book. Uh, this, but the book is in hands. So please come on the stage and uh, share your thoughts about this book. Please welcome, sir. Munis, <clears throat> I met about half a century back. That makes us pretty old. Uh, the common connection was uh, Sindh University, where I went first as a student and then I taught there. Uh, I taught international affairs and uh, Munis uh, attended perhaps one class of mine because then I left university. And it is good that he attended only one class. Had he attended more, he would not have been here where he is. Maybe at much less position, lesser position. We knew him at that time as son of a legendary figure, Sheikh Ayaz. At that time he was known as a son but subsequently established himself as an accomplished scholar and an intellectual. Uh, I have uh, read his book and the names that, many names that he has mentioned are also those whom I had the honor to know. And many of them are not in this world today. So as Amir Minai said, Naam var ho gaye be nishan kaise kaise, zami kha gai asma kaise kaise. So those were big names that were with us and today they are not more, uh, no more with us. Uh, this book is three things combined. It's a travelogue and it is an intellectual discourse and it is reminiscences. The important thing about this book is that while it narrates experiences of the author, it also gives the history of the country, the history of the people that he met, their backgrounds, the political and the economic situation of the country, and the cultural uh, milieu in which he was there. So it is not only a travelogue, it's many things together. And when you read them, you really, you really learn a lot. Uh, one wonders at the, at the breadth of his study, 
and it's amazing that he has imbibed so much knowledge uh, in such a short time of his life. Way back, I was also in U.S. and doing my master's. I was in Washington, D.C. and in a university called American University. And uh, one of I was 32 at that time when I left uh, for this uh, master's course, and I was pretty senior in my in my service. And uh, lo and behold, when I reached there, I had I learned that I have to take two compulsory courses, part one and part two, of statistics and calculus. And my God, it was a nightmare. I don't know how, I just barely went through. So I'm happy that perhaps you did not have to go through statistics and calculus. Uh, there, is, there is one observation of mine which pertains to the youth of Sindh and Baluchistan. Unlike youth of Punjab and frontier, the youth of these two provinces is progressive by nature. And they are also in the reading, they read. Not that Punjabi youth or uh, Pathan youth does not, they also do. But the youth of Sindh and Baluchistan have an edge over them. They are more progressive in their thinking and they are they also read perhaps that is because there is this perception of being an being an oppressed nationality so that's why we kind of uh, tend to read and become progressive americans are not really that regressive people they are also large hearted people because their country is large, their avenues are large, their vehicles are large, so they have this tendency to become large-hearted. Nevertheless, there are contradictions. There are contradictions in their society, and uh, uh, there's capitalism, there's poverty, and there's a lot of these things. But because their structure is democratic and federal, that's why that that society has kind of remained stable and it has not become unstable. So is the case with India, frankly. India has a lot of contradictions, a number of nationalities, different languages, different cultures, different uh, ways of life. But perhaps the only system which is keeping them together is their federal structure because there's democracy. So that system kind of sustains uh, themselves. An excellent book. It was a pleasure reading it and I'm uh, delighted that uh, uh, you know somebody has contributed so much and there's a great chapter about Mr. Javed Bhutto and uh, it's always uh, a great quality to remember old friends and uh, remember them so well. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kai Sahib. Now this is the time uh, for the book launching. So I would like to request uh, Sir Altaf Makati Sahib and Kai Sahib to come on the stage and uh, perform this book launching event, please. Please. please have a clapping for uh, Dr. Riyaz Sheikh Saab. Uh, thank you very much. 
Uh, sir, you can have your seats, please. Now, I would like to request uh, Dean Social Sciences Department and Education Department, Dr. Professor Dr. Yar Sheikh, uh, to please come on the stage and share his thoughts about this book and the life of uh, Mr. Monis Ayaz Sheikh, who have spent five years there in USA. And basically, this is the memories and some incidents uh, which hap uh, that happened there in USA. One uh, incident that I remember uh, that in last he will describe that a uh, lady was suiciding, as, uh, she was uh, making a suicide attempt. But uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Monis Ayaz Sheikh motivated her, so she uh, did not do, do that uh, act. Uh, further details will uh, be delivered by Monis Ayaz Sheikh. But now, Dr. Ayaz Sheikh Saab, please come on the stage and share your thoughts about uh, his book. Uh, thank you very much. First of all, uh, I'm grateful to Monis Hayas Saab he decided to launch book here at Zabist. And secondly, secondly I will congratulate uh, Monis Hayas Saab. Lastly, he has written uh, his uh, stay there in US for the last five years. Uh, before coming to the book, uh, let me introduce Nafisa with by properly to you people. Nafisa is a journalist by profession. She worked there with Dawn and those difficult days and how and what are the contribution of Nafisa, and then I will come to the uh, uh, her spouse, uh, late Professor Javed Bhutto sahab. Uh, Nafisa was working with the Dawn, and ultimately she was the first reporter, as you people have been uh, told earlier. But her contribution is more important. She used to uh, cover the court reportings, she used to cover the crime reporting, and lastly, how she was connected to Javed Bhutto, that's an important thing. And I will uh, let you know that when the sister of uh, Professor Javed Bhutto was assassinated by very influential uh, family in the feudal structure of Sin, uh, Professor Javed decided to take up the case and Nafisa was the strongest person who took up this case and ultimately highlighted the entire story in uh, newspapers. <laughs> and, and, this, and this was the first time that ultimately uh, a case came to the conclusion and a uh, uh, story was uh, revealed to the society. So this is a significant contribution. Secondly, when we talk about her book, she has written a book as well about the struggle of democracy in Pakistan. That's a very interesting book. You must read as a student of social sciences. This is a very informative book. How the Institute of Democracy has emerged in Pakistan, what are the challenges to democracy, and how we can improve all those things. So her book is available in the library as well. So kindly go through her book, and you will uh, find a lot of uh, question mark on the sustainability of democracy in Pakistan. <laughs> yeah, G, 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 uh, board the uh, trend for democracy. The book is available in our library as well, so kindly read. Now coming to let uh, Professor Javed Bhutto's case. Javed Bhutto was a professor of philosophy in uh, Sin University, Jamshoro our mentors as well, because we remember Javed was an icon, because in Sin, uh, we have two people who have contributed to us uh, enlightenment. One was, uh, we have <coughs> Ibrahim Joyosa, and other was the Bhutto, uh, Javed Bhutto in the uh, recent, recent past. They were the two people who work on philosophy, who work on the issues which are ultimately for the progress of the society and something else. Uh, and unfortunately, as uh, mentioned earlier, uh, Javed Bhutto was assassinated in US, unfortunately, uh, without any uh, cause and something else. But it was uh, one of the tingling points which ultimately raised many questions on the US uh, uh, policing system as well. Okay, how a person who was already on parole, how he was allowed to live in a common places where he could create a, you see, uh, some uh, social no sense in the society, and ultimately he killed a professor without any justification and something else. Now, coming to the book, uh, uh, book uh, which is comprising of 214 pages, it's a, 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 a thick book, it's not a small book. Somebody says it's a, it has written in a casual work. No, it's not written in a casual work, but it's a proper uh, written book uh, with a lot of chapters divided on different uh, topics. I have gone. Uh, to the complete book, but I, I, I'm having a, a bad throat, so I will be confining myself uh, to the uh, maximum duration as I can. Uh, 
there are many uh, issues which have been discussed in the book, and those books uh, issues are ultimately very pertinent to our uh, 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 environment as well, because book was uh, uh, from uh, 1995 uh, onwards, but ultimately it was, it's cover, cover many things which are ultimately relevant to our society. A person who has gone for his higher studies in USA, naturally and uh, obviously it is considered that he has gone for his only studies. But uh, intellectual like uh, Monis, uh, Monis Ayaz, who is coming from a uh, uh, great legacy from his family and from his father and other things, ultimately he was not in just a student, but he was a conscious political worker who was observing US society, he was looking to the society, and not only looking to the society, but he was trying to uh, recall the US history as well, and ultimately he tried to connect US current situation with the US history, and ultimately he tried to analyze certain things, those are very important. Uh, like uh, he has discussed the emergence of U.S. society, as we all know, U.S. society is in comprising of immigrants, those who came from, uh, one is uh, the people who came from Europe, the colonizers. Secondly, they brought uh, slaves from Africa and other places. They brought a, a slave in U.S. who become, uh, you see, a bonded labor there. And third phase was the people who came from Europe in the 18th and 19th century, when there was a, you see, uh, <coughs> drought in Europe, and ultimately people from Ireland, other places, they went to Europe, USA. And there is a lot of uh, usage, uh, difference between these two uh, phenomena. First is the slave society, who created a role in uh, saturation of wealth in US. Ultimately, US become the superpower with the help and support of all these uh, slaves who came from uh, uh, Africa and other places. They were involved in agriculture, they were involved in mining, and they were involved in <coughs> other, other professions, ultimately they play a very important role in emergence of US as a superpower. Second leap was those European migrants who arrived in US in late 18th and 19th century. Mostly they were Jews. They were Jews, they were from the working classes. They came from Ireland, they came from Germany, and they came from other parts of the Europe, from hand to mouth. And they played very important role in the emergence of the modern labor uh, movement in the world. Hair market, which you all know, we celebrate 1st of May as every day as a Labor Day, as a holiday. But you have to understand that in America on 1st of May 1887, there were huge labor upright in USA. A uh, lot of killings took place and ultimately labor were given a right. So you have to understand how this emergence of modern entire professional environment has emerged. It has emerged from a long struggle in US when the labor, they fought for their right. There was uh, no fixed working hours. People, they have to work for 12 to 18 hours without any break and work in a very hostile environment. But the labor movement emerged and that was comprising of the mostly Jews, immigrants who arrived from Europe to America. And on 1st of May 1887, when the fight took place between the police and the uh, lab, lab, labor laborers, there was a lot of assassination, but lastly, uh, it was recognized that there will be eight hours working day. There will be weekends for the workers, there will be fixed salaries for the workers, and that was a major change which took place, and uh, Monis and Ayas Sahib has partially uh, covered this up. So one has to analyze that all this present, uh, 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 the system of the working class and other things has emerged from this struggle. Like in another chapter, uh, when he has uh, compared the situation in Cuba, and you all know uh, Cuba, is a naturally like an extension of the US because it's that close to, and you have uh, Guantanamo Bay because if you remember, uh, you are a student of social sciences, you know after the 9-11, lot of uh, prisons, they were placed there, uh, those who were arrested from different parts of the world, especially Afghanistan, Pakistan, other places, those who were the Al-Qaeda militants somewhere else. So Cuba become a part of, but uh, in 60s, how Cuba become uh, very important for all these situations, that is important, that has, uh, Professor Moni Sayas has uh, discussed in his uh, book, and uh, one must read how uh, these dynamics have changed, uh, and ultimately, I don't know how many among you, they, they remember there was a missile uh, fixation of, uh, by U, uh, USSR in uh, neighboring of uh, US at uh, Cuba, and ultimately, it led towards nearly another uh, nuclear war after the World, World War II, but uh, luckily, it was saved, and something else, it, had, it happened. Then in another chapter, uh, Professor Monis uh, has uh, discussed, uh, you see, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
uh, uh, this, is, this is the Sindhi title. If I have no problem to read out in Sindhi. American Aurat Rape a Bengali by Nagora. So if in this chapter, Professor uh, Mohanis has ultimately discussed a very painful chapter of our history. What happened in East Pakistan, that's not called the Bangladesh. And once they went for their war of liberation, ultimately what our state has done with them, that is the painful history, but we have to keep that part of our uh, legacy as well. Because whatsoever the uh, wrong have been done in the past, it's a time that we, have, we should undo with all those, uh, whether it happened with the women, it happened with any, anybody else that has been discussed partially, so we have to uh, think like this and we have to uh, overcome all those uh, things which have been uh, working like this. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Monis has ultimately uh, uh, highlighted a few more things, and that was about the end of the Cold War and uh, end of the bipolar world to the unipolar world. You all remember, from 1991, when the Soviet Union dismantled and ultimately a uh, lot of new nation states, more than a dozen of the new nation states emerged in Central Asia and the Baltic, Baltic Europe. Uh, all these are previously part of the USSR. But after dismantling of Soviet Union, world was thinking like that all the crises have been resolved. Now there will be more peaceful world and ultimately uh, uh, democracy and enlightenment and uh, liberalism will uh, prevail in the society. And that uh, Professor Monis, as Monis has discussed in this book and ultimately he has mentioned the name of, I hope you are all familiar with the uh, name of Fakuyama, Frankas Fakuyama. He wrote a, a very important book at that time and his name of the book was End of the History and the Last Man. When he mentioned that all conflict had been resolved, now there will be no more conflict because we, are, we, have ended into, we have entered into a new democratic phase and things will be resolved. But unfortunately, what happened in the next one decade, by 2001, we are the worst type of terrorist activity in the world and ultimately changed the entire world. You were, you, you, we were of all this view that since bipolar world has ended and now it's a unipolar world, ultimately there will be single hegemony and single hegemony means there will be no conflict. But one had to realize that this uh, hegemony from bipolar world to, uh, uh, to single polar world was achieved at a very painful experience because uh, we promoted religious fundamentalism, we promoted extremism just to counter the socialist ideas. And this was a turning point in the world history that by 79, when there was a new order was given by uh, British, then British Prime Minister, uh, 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 what was her name? Thatcher, Margaret Thatcher and the uh, American President Reagan. At that time, they decided ultimately we are giving new world order. And that was a turning time when, uh, uh, when ultimately uh, Russian forces they arrived in Afghanistan. And then a new phase of uh, you see, terrorism, world extremism, and something has emerged in the world history and things uh, turn into very negative for the world. And then what type of democracy we have, like Nafisa mentioned, UK, Americans, they are going through the process of uh, uh, electoral process today and tomorrow we will see who comes out. The new trend emerged, the trend of populism, the trend of uh, whatsoever uh, emerging in Pakistan, in your neighboring like Modi and uh, Trump and all these places, the new phase of populism is the outcome of the new liberalism introduced by capitalist bloc just to dismantle the uh, socialism because they they killed the politics of ideological discourses, which uh, uh, Professor Monis has mentioned very rightly in, in his book, ultimately, this changed the scenario of the world. Because now the emerging new middle classes have no idea how the struggle is, has been done in the past. As I mentioned you, in 1887, people, they fought for the fixation of the rights, for the wages and something else, but that ideological discourses have wither away. And there are new classes which is emer emerging, and the classes which have no idea okay, how the political struggle has to be taken uh, in future direction. People, uh, those who are coming uh, with a uh, new model, they are coming with intolerance, where uh, social media is playing a role which is not further nurturing uh, healthy political discourses, but it's promoting the nature of intolerance. If you all, we all know how this uh, social media which is uh, mostly going in a direction less, that is problem with us. Uh, uh, Professor Monis has, uh, uh, and then Fakoyama, who initially celebrated the dismantling of Soviet Union, but in the next uh, two decades, he then wrote two more books. 
uh, which uh, Moni Saab has not mentioned, but I hope in the future book he will uh, mention. Uh, his second book was Political Order and the Political, political Disorder. And he mentioned that whatsoever we have done, now because of that there is a political uh, disorder in the world. Entire Middle East is disrupt, we all know. Entire Middle East is disrupt, and then rest parts of the world is facing problem. And third, his book was very recently, uh, you see, published, and just uh, a few years earlier during the corona time it was published, and the name of the book was Identity, the Demand of Dignity, and the Politics of Resentment. Why there is a resentment in the world? Why urban middle classes, they are fighting for the system and they're challenging and they're bringing new faces like Trump, they're bringing new faces like Modi, they're bringing a few new faces whether in Italy, whether in somewhere else and we also experience in our country in 2018 how we are facing. So these are the important books on which we have to think and then we have to uh, realize ke how uh, we are uh, going into forward. Just I will take one, one, one minute more and then... And then, then, then third uh, the thing which I would like to mention is that once we are reading uh, to the history of U.S., we have to keep in the, in the mind that people's history of U.S. is completely different from what uh, state policy of the U.S. is. There may be a lot of differences. There will be a lot of differences. Like uh, I, at this moment, I will refer a name of C.W. Right Mill, one of the most important Marxian scholars from U.S.A. when he wrote his book, and book's name, name is Power, people, uh, power, politics, and people. Okay, how in USA all these policies are designed by the people who are involved in the process of armament. This politics of armament in USA is driving their economy. Whether it's whether it's Middle East, whether it's our region, whether it's any region. And uh, 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 day before yesterday, there was another discussion on this. That in 1973, when there was a second war between Israel and the Syria and Egypt, at that time is Syria and uh, Syria and Egypt had almost taken over half of the Israel. But at that moment, uh, America came for the rescue of the Israel. Otherwise, this uh, issue may have been resolved at that time, and they provided a lot of, you see, armament because they never wanted the Middle East should be taken over by a social, uh, socialist USSR because the entire at that time, whether it's Syria, whether it's Yemen, South Yemen, whether it's uh, Egypt, they all were the socialists. They all were the socialists, and they never wanted to have a socialist Middle East uh, at the at the, uh, you see, head of the oil industry and something else. So there's a lot of discussion on this issue, and I ultimately, uh, again, uh, uh, congratulate uh, Mohanes Ayas for writing this book, and ultimately this will the process uh, will continue. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Saab. So it was a complete book review of the book uh, which Dr. Professor uh, Riyaz Sheikh Saab uh, presented. Now, uh, before moving uh, the final speaker and author of this book, I would like to share his profile with uh, students. Mr. Monis Ayaz Sheikh was born on 17th of Feb in 1956 in Shikarpur city. He did his master's in IR. He also has done LLB, worked in Shalatif University, Khairpur, uh, he went to USA in 1991 uh, for further studies in Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania, USA. And there he did uh, his master's, his second master's, in fact, in extenting circumstances. Then he came back uh, to the country in 1996. So I'll ask a question from him that why he have not done his PhD from there, what were the reasons? Uh, he also worked in culture and tourism department as director general uh, from 2008 to 2010. Uh, basically, this is his first book, but two more books are also coming, as sir told me, that uh, other books are also coming soon. So now I would like to request uh, author of the book, and uh, please, uh, Mr. Monas Ayaz Sheikh Saab, come here on the stage and tell us the story of this book and your journey of the life. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Amin Joyo. <clears throat> Aap Sindh Abhyas. First of all, I would like to thank to 
Dr. Riaz Sheikh Saab, who has uh, arranged this uh, inauguration of my book, and my ex-teacher, Kazim Tiyal Saab, also, uh, who has uh, <coughs> helped us a lot to arrange this book, also. And uh, he has himself uh, uh, come to attend this uh, inauguration. That is more than uh, anything to me. And uh, Makati Saab was a vice president of our uh, Zebis. I'm thankful to him that he has taken time and joined us. Uh, I'm thankful to Nafisa Udvai, who was very busy today because she, as she told that uh, she is running a media agency, JB, with the name of JB Connects, after the name of his uh, late husband, Javed Bhutto. And uh, right now, she'll be, you know, uh, I think her mind and ears <laughs> are to the United States because that today the election is taking place and the polling has just started because uh, it will be 7 o'clock over there and in some, uh, uh, some zone, you know, because there are four time zones in America. And uh, she will be leaving afterwards and going to connect with all those uh, correspondents over there to know the, from the beginning, from the polling station directly, from uh, the, all these correspondents will be, uh, you know, telling live about the elections, uh, which is a very uh, important foremost election in the world, you know, because United States uh, of America is the sole single power in the world. And uh, the elections over there matters a lot to the world because it shapes the economy, the policies of almost uh, uh, out of uh, three-fourths of the world, you know. This book uh, is, uh, the first thing is that why one writes? Why people write? The answer is that the very literature you people write about is to entertain, and the second is to enlighten them, to aware them. And uh, I have uh, written this book during my studies in uh, United States in the Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania, which is not a very high level university, but it's uh, like a second or third line university, University can say, and uh, of uh, mostly of lower middle class and middle class students getting education over there. And I went there and what I learned the courses I have uh, seen uh, from, the, uh, from the window of those courses, the Society of America, the politics of America, the history of, polit the history of America, and the Pakistani and especially the Sindhi folks living over there. All I have uh, this reminiscences about them. And reminiscence and is the word for Sindhi, Sara, what we call Sara, which is the good memories. And uh, Sara America Paraji is the Sindhi title. And I have written uh, in Sindhi, especially for 
since the students, uh, since I don't find any uh, any book on uh, United States, there are a lot of travelogues and memoirs about uh, uh, United States of America, but uh, in Sindhi, I don't find anyone. So I I'm not a writer of the kind that uh, I just sit on the table and try to write, and uh, which is. Uh, spontaneous writing, I believe in that, which just comes out of, uh, I, uh, there's a good poem by Ch Charles Bukowski, is a United States poet, nowadays a living poet, and he says that don't write uh, for anything or under any pressure or anything. Whatever comes from your, suddenly from your insight, then you start writing which is very uh, a truthful thing because it comes from your inside, though calculated inside, and it comes out, you know, from your mind as an intuitive writing, which is very, very kind of, uh, uh, two kinds of writings supposed to be. So, the Sindhi students, uh, I don't know how many Sindhi students are here uh, who can read this book, but uh, you can, uh, all those uh, who don't know Sindhi, they can, uh, with the help of the Arabic, uh, you know, alphabet, they can understand and they can read the book. And now uh, I have a uh, uh, in fact, jotted down the very small uh, pieces and uh, chapters, and then how I started. Everything in this book is related with America. The poems, the quotations, the people, the person, everything. You know, I've given photographs also here. They all are related to in one way or the other to America and why stay over there. So it starts how, <clears throat> the, you know, in the 91, when uh, the Gulf War started and uh, I was called by the, my sponsors, uh, the USAID scholarship, which was given under the name of Central Overseas Training by the, uh, Pakistan government, and uh, I was asked to appear uh, in the TOEFL test, which was fortunately on the next day, and I appeared on the next day, and I qualified that, and uh, then there was a question of, uh, you know, the uh, admission. And they say that, uh, well, we, we can get you admitted at the, I remember the name of a U.S. director at that time, Tom Rogers was an, a very nice person. And he wanted to help me. But he said that since uh, the Gulf War has started, we don't know what's going to happen. So if you can get by yourself and some, uh, you know, admission in some, in any of the university, I would suggest you to just leave immediately and join them because we don't know what will be the relations afterwards, how long the war is going to persist, you know. So fortunately, my vice chancellor, I joined Shah Abdul Latif University as uh, uh, Dr. Rayal Shahid very well paraphrased my all the chapters uh, and uh, very, uh, insightful, you know, speech he has given. So, uh, fortunately, my vice chancellor was visiting the United States of America, Ibrahim Shah Bukhari. And uh, he was there and he uh, must have known the situation also. 
So he got me an admission there. And fortunately, there was uh, the dean of the international studies over there was Dr. Mughal, who was a colleague of our uh, Imtiaz Ghazi Saab uh, in political science department. And Ghazi Saab was in the international uh, uh, relations department. And it was the only few classes I uh, was taught by him because he was selected for the uh, CSS, uh, CSP officers, and he left immediately, and uh, uh, so we missed him, a very good teacher, but all that period up to this time, you know, in, uh, we have been meeting, you know, on and off, you know. So that admission I luckily got there, and uh, Tom, uh, I got uh, the telegram at that time in Islamabad, and uh, he got the telegram over there, and uh, I, that uh, I got the admission, and so you must uh, be ready to, you know, join the Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania. Now, Edinburgh University is a small university, as I told you, that, uh, and I have, uh, it's in the Pennsylvania state, so I have started with that, uh, with uh, William Penn, uh, the state is named after him, and uh, who was a very uh, freedom-loving person, and has a commune built in there. And uh, William Penn was a Quaker, uh, by faith and Christianity. And uh, he made a big, huge commune. Pennsylvania means the, you know, Sylvania is known as uh, jungle. It's a German word, means uh, jungle. So it was a jungle of William Penn. He used to live there, and uh, whatever comes uh, there, he used to, you know, uh, share food and everything and give refuge to them. And similarly, the, the blacks who, used, who were slaves at that time, they used to, and uh, whoever runs away from there, from their master, he used to come to William Penn's commune and he was welcomed there and uh, he was uh, uh, given uh, refuge. So, but unfortunately, <coughs> William Penn was, because of his faith and because of this uh, giving refuse to all the runaway peoples, he was burned alive to death. Uh, so that is a very inspiring story in the America, the first. And when the America got independence, the Philadelphia was made the first capital of uh, uh, Pennsylvania. The state, the city of Philadelphia of America, I'm sorry. Later on, uh, so there are how I got there and uh, the first thing is uh, that uh, a student, uh, he came from the student office and he received me at the airport and he brought me to, to my dorm. And I was standing in my dormitory, he said, and he'll be back. He went inside and talked with the warden and uh, came out and then we took our luggage and went inside. And my, my room was allotted. But after some time, uh, two or three students uh, who were passing while I was standing outside, he said that, they said that, are you from here? I said, no, I am not from here. Uh, I'm from Pakistan. He said, but you look that the way you were standing on that day, you know, you were quite indifferent to everything, and we thought that you are, uh, you, you, belong to, you belong here. 
So I said no, but the thing is that I've been uh, educated in an English medium school, these uh, missionary schools, and I was uh, little much known about the uh, the comics, you know, the uh, about their uh, heroes, the Huckleberry Finn, and you know Daniel Duffy, and uh, and other you know cowboy kind of <laughs> so quite uh, uh, little little fa familiar with the uh, comics which uh, the uh, the common American uh, uh, boys and girls you were used to read. So later on, I was uh, very much I got very much familiar with them. And uh, the day came when uh, I'm very fortunate to say that, and I'm not uh, hope uh, breaking or boosting myself, but that once we were in a party, and uh, one of these students he came running uh, along with his uh, with a friend, and he hugged me and he said that Munis, we love you. We love two people from Pakistan. They knew me from Pakistan. Uh, one is Benazir Bhutto, and the other is you. <coughs> so I was uh, really uh, excited. <laughs> and I said, how come? Well, she's a known personality. And uh, they might have seen her on uh, television, because she used to go visit uh, Princeton and uh, Howard, and they were giving lectures over there. So, and and they said that that uh, we always uh, loved two people from you, from there. Anyway, so and it, another incident happened also that uh, I was uh, visiting the city of Boston. And uh, I was just at the Faneuil Hall, uh, and Faneuil Hall is a very central place of Boston. Nafira knows very well because she has uh, gone to the Boston University, I think, or Amherst College? Yeah. Northeastern. Northeastern University, which is in Massachusetts, right? Boston. Boston, Boston right? Yeah. In the city of Boston. So Faneuil Hall is like a southern place, you know. Uh, it's a, I was standing there along with my other friend and, and an older guy uh, with a flat hat and, uh, you know, the FBI people like long coat. <laughs> and he came up to me and said that, are you Indian? I said, no, I'm not Indian. I'm Pakistani. Oh, you look alike, you people, you know, Indian and Pakistani. Went, yes, we look alike. And he said, I am very sorry because of the Rajiv Gandhi, who was, uh, I don't know, was, uh, uh, was assassinated on that day. And, uh, and then knowing that I'm from Pakistan, he said, oh, I'm sorry for uh, Zede Bhutto. So, so he was... Uh, you know, hang there. And he praised a lot. And I said, yeah, they are very uh, families uh, with legacy. And similarly, like the Kennedy family, you know, the Kennedy family. And uh, by the way, at that time, the movie Kennedy was running, JFK was running in America at that time. And I saw that also. And uh, so he was, uh, and I was feeling very happy and excited to know that the Americans know about Zaydi Bhutto and about Benazir Bhutto. <clears throat> so these are the kinds of things uh, I've written. And uh, the main thing was, uh, this is written from 91 to 96, and later on, from 21 to 23, when this uh, crisis uh, 
Blacks uh, Lives Matters, you know, this movement has started. And after the, you know, killing of some, uh, some incidents took place of killing of uh, blacks in America. And uh, so, just like there's one chapter, Loud Knows No Color. I saw it on a t-shirt of a girl written when I was there. So I asked, uh, I asked her that, uh, well, I, I like the, the, the quote which is written on your t-shirt, but uh, you have done uh, not uh, treated very well the blacks. I thought she was feeling very uh, um, guilty and ashamed and he said, oh, not we, our ancestors did that and we are sorry for that. So I felt that and, uh, the Pennsylvania state was very liberal, you know, since from, from I think, probably the William Penn's, you know, uh, 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 effect or impact on them. And uh, so there were a lot of the, there was less discrimination in uh, almost nil, I would say, in Pennsylvania between blacks and whites over there. So when I think again this Lives Matters started 21, so I have added other chapters also. Because I was writing in those days, and some of its, uh, uh, my, uh, the episodes were published in the uh, Sindhi magazine also. Likewise, there's a, <clears throat> now my friend, Javed Bhutto, and Nafisa, Javed Bhutto was a professor in, uh, used to be professor in, uh, assistant professor in Sindh University in the Department of Philosophy. And he left job and they both left for America for what was known as land of opportunity. And now they say that it's a land of tossed salad because they are different people living together. There is a unity in the diversity. And like in cellar, the things are very, you know, separate things. And it is not a melting point. They say now it's not a melting point. But it's a tossed salad now. Well, <clears throat> the land of opportunity took them there. And uh, they worked there a lot. Javed used to work uh, with the, uh, the special people over there. Nafisa used to work in uh, Voice of America. She was producer on Urdu services. And also, huh? anchor person, sorry. And was also, has remained uh, as a uh, sub-editor in Washington Post also. Right, she's been frequently writing also there. Here, a lot of people who write here, they tell themselves as sub-editor of the <laughs> newspaper. And uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> Javed is, was known to me since last 40 years. He belonged to my Chicago city. And he was a student of Bolan Medical Student. Koita, but was very much into the literature. So he left that, uh, and due to the conditions over there in 70s, uh, he left the college, and then he came to Karachi University, and he joined that university. And uh, from here, he went to you know, Bulgaria and did his uh, master's in philosophy there. And then he came back and uh, luckily he got the job in uh, Sindh University. And he was so much a Sufi, as she said, and we know all that, and we all are some kind of uh, Sufis also. That Javed was even sleeping on the day when he was called by a friend that you have an interview today. <laughs> and so he immediately or next day perhaps, something like that. He got ready and he, you know, uh, 
uh, reached there uh, by the time. So Javed uh, had a very unfortunate incident. He used to, on a very on a day, he came back from doing his groceries early in the morning. Uh, he was uh, murdered, shot dead by a black uh, uh, psychopath who was living uh, under their, you know, apartment and uh, I was doing all his parties and everything and Javed complained the landlord about that and the landlord told, uh, which he was not supposed to tell that psychopath but to, to police or something and that person got uh, very much paranoid or something and you know on a just a very fine day he came back from doing grocery and he was pulling from uh, uh, you know from the dicky you know the grocery the guy came you know from behind and he shot first but that shot didn't go and as he turned back he followed him, he ran and he followed him and he just shot him point blank. Sorry to explain all that. Uh, since we used to also talk every day on, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> video talk on phone, in the morning, in the evening, I used to make my tea here in Karachi and call him and he used to get away there early in the morning there, used to make his coffee and used to talk to me all this. And he wanted to know about the news of what's happening in Sindh every day. You know, He was very much concerned about it. He never wrote perhaps a one short story which was published in Mehran magazine. But he used to talk. He used to talk wonderful. He was a very good teacher. He used to live in, uh, when he was in uh, Sindh University, there were only seven or eight of his students. They used to come early in the morning at the teacher's hostel, wake him up, have breakfast with him in, in his uh, teacher's hostel, all of the seven or eight students. Then they used to walk together and to the department, he used to lecture them, and then after that, they used to come back with him to the uh, hostel, and there he used to serve them lunch also, and then afterwards, up to the evening, a tea time, and then the students used to leave. And the very interesting thing is that Throughout this all time, I used to go to and I used to live there a uh, few days uh, on and off in the Sindh University and the teachers' hostels there. They used to talk absolutely about philosophy, about the life of philosophers, about the jokes of philosophers, about their achievements, about their influence, about that. And nothing out of that. It was completely to me like the Aristotle's Peripetia Institute, or like the Aristotle's uh, or the Plato's Academy. Peripetia, they, they used to walk together and uh, uh, with Aristotle or Plato and they used to discuss about the philosophy. So <clears throat> it was very much like that to me. Anyway, it was after that, there was a big uh, trial, instead the trial is going on, and there was a great loss for Nafisa, and uh, she is still, uh, I hope, God give, him, give her patience too, and she has faced a lot, with a lot of patience. She remained there for about four years. She went to the courts, you know, hired all these attorneys, and uh, spend a very stressful time there, uh, you know, exploring this uh, the court and uh, case uh, uh, 
activities and proceedings. Now, uh, lastly, she has uh, done with one case, uh, and still the criminal case is going on because the judiciary of America is not less than uh, like us. You know. They are burdened with so many cases. They are late. They are, the proceedings are, you know, they kept on, you know, dragging them, kept on uh, changing the dates. And uh, so still there's a last hearing, I hope, in January uh, coming month. No, or may, may not have. Still go that. <clears throat> so, Javed, uh, that's why these were all the last two uh, couple of years my uh, talk to him on video. And as my very old friend, a very good friend, a very philosophical, literary friend, had a lot of books and we used to discuss and learn from each other. I dedicated the book to Javed. <clears throat> the <clears throat> besides, there is a lot of comparative study of American society and Pakistani society also. There are a lot of very funny things uh, how our Sindhi folks are living there. I have given them in this book also, and uh, their life also, and their uh, tough life also, and uh, their groups there also and how they are working, and uh, also uh, the, I have, in the beginning, I have quoted the poem of Robert Frost, the American poet, that uh, how he has chosen the, there are few lines I would like to <clears throat> recite for you. I took the one loss, less travel road by, and that has made all the difference. Jake Shah Sai and Sandi Shah Abdul Latif is a share of my eye. Ak ulti dhar, one ulto amasi. Ak ulti dhar, one ulto amasi. Je lo aro lok vahe, ucho va obhar, manja noch nehar. Pur Putiro Piriani. And likewise, uh, Sheikh Khayaz has also said that, Dath wadi shay na hai, par sach wadi shay aai. Jo sach mach aai mach, so much wadi shay aai. So we have taken the other parts, I mean, my personally, I don't know how far it's uh, going, but it's a difficult part because you have to be, you know, uh, question a lot, you know, the society and over here, so it becomes very difficult. And uh, these kind of things, which started with the movement of uh, hippieism in the 60s, which were the office springs of uh, those war veterans uh, who fought in Vietnam, Indochina, and other, and uh, their uh, office springs, you started this movement because they wanted to end the war. So make love, not war, make peace, make love, peace, make peace, not war, these kinds of slogans uh, you might have heard. And so, so this, this movement all started then. And this whole, uh, I have, uh, I have uh, written all that history and I went to these all universities, Boston and Yale, where from where the city has started, except the Berkeley in California, uh, which was the main hub of this movement. And uh, so they all come into, in the Democratic Party line or level, I can say, this, the voters, you can say that. And uh, like moderate people, the Republicans are very conservative people. 
So these are two parties which are having elections today. And uh, I have also compared uh, with reference to uh, Parvez Huzbai, as a very known scholar and uh, brother of our Navish Rafisa. Uh, he wrote an article in Dan uh, some 10 years, eight years back, I think. Uh, the next Trump, Pakistan's next Trump. And he uh, compared the, uh, our form, uh, ex prime minister, Imran Khan, with uh, uh, President Trump in their characteristics and their uh, approach. So today is again uh, <laughs> the day when uh, a lot of you must be, you know, might be uh, listening on the television, a uh, lot of heated discussions about the elections in America. And especially there are some spokesmen nowadays around the country and appearing as a spokespersons of President Trump also. A lot of President Trump is very much against the immigrant first thing. And they are supporting him. There are a number of letters written by the, on the other hand, by the Democratic Party. 130 congressmen were written to our uh, government to release uh, or about the concern about the human rights in the situation in Pakistan. Well, this is all politics, you know. And power politics is uh, America's, the real, real politics is America's. Uh, is a basic motto. So let's see what's going to happen and how there is, is going to influence our country. And, uh, and let's uh, 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 bid well to Nafisa to go and uh, join uh, our work also. And, uh, Thank you so much for coming and listening to my this book. <clears throat> and uh, first I thought that uh, there will be less people because the people who were invited, the same man, uh, Madam Mata Rashdi, who was supposed to preside, was MNA. But today she was suddenly called uh, yesterday, uh, last night. I will, and she left this morning for Islamabad for the session, for some emergency ses session. And uh, the other speaker was uh, uh, Jami Chandu, the known scholar, who has written the back page of my book. Uh, unfortunately, his mother is not feeling well, so he couldn't come, and he has to go to his hometown. Uh, so what I would like to say that there was one uh, great mystic philosopher, Gurjif, his name was. He was an Armenian, Gurjif. And he went to Paris sometimes around early 20th century. And uh, there was a notice on the hall that Gurjif will lecture tomorrow so at so-and-so time. A lot of people came, but Gurjif didn't turn up. The next day, some people came again. There is a philosopher. Maybe he'll come today. Might he come today? So, <laughs> but again, the Gurjis didn't turn up. On the third day, there was only one guy who went there, who said, there might he come, you know, he is a philosopher, you know, and you want to listen to him badly. And Gurjif appeared <laughs> on that day. <laughs> so in the hall, the guy said that, sir, I'm the only person. What are you going to, uh, you know, why are you going to waste time on me? So he said, no, you are the right person. You are the right person because you waited for me. Unknowingly, not knowingly that I will come. So I will lecture you only. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I am fortunate that a lot of people have turned out today. And they are enough for me.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sheikh Saab. Uh, as on, on behalf of uh, Sindh Abhyas Academy, Social Science Department, Zabis University, I would like to request Dr. Muhammad Altaf Makati Saab, who is our Vice President, Academics, Zabis University, please come on the stage and uh, say a word of thanks. I'm really sorry. I forgot this thing in my book also. I'm really grateful to my <laughs> wife who is sitting here. I'm thankful to her because without her support and you know patience, this book would have not come again. So I'm once again sorry for that. <laughs> you are, you are the best <laughs> well, uh, it is always better to come at the end because you have to say very little. Everything has been said very comprehensively by everyone. So thanks to everyone for attending this uh, very useful uh, event. I'm really thankful and congratulate uh, Mr. Sheikh Monis Ayaz for writing this uh, wonderful book. I'm also thankful to Madam Nafisa for uh, honoring this uh, very important event. I didn't know that she is a sister of uh, Parvez Hoodbai. So Parvez Hoodbai has already come here and uh, has given a very, very good speech here. Well, uh, the book you have written on the good memories of America. So incidentally, I also used to be in America. I happened to be in America for several years. I did my graduations from Boston University, Madam. After Boston, to Boston University, USA, and you know Boston University was built in 1839, and I have also a lot of good memories regarding America, whether people like it or not. But certainly, it is a solo superpower at the moment, and I can also now think to write my memories about America. So in the next ceremony, perhaps, we will... <laughs> I will not take uh, too much time. Uh, I will just uh, maybe five minutes, not more than that. But certainly there are good things uh, there. First of all, I fully agree it's a land of opportunities. And uh, considering the fact that almost 80% inventions come from America. So today if America says, I want to withdraw from uh, all my inventions, so believe you me, half of the world will go into the Stone Age. Because lights, buildings, constructions, computers, IT, whatever. So I feel that when I was there, the society is quite encouraging. If you have little potential, society thrusts you towards the bigger uh, side. Here, unfortunately, in our country, if you have some small talent, so that is also further depleted because of the several reasons you must be knowing this. Some of the beautiful things which I have uh, noted there, that, uh, you know, uh, when I was living in uh, Boston, so just across my street where I was living in Commonwealth Avenue, if you have heard the name, it's a very big avenue there. So just across uh, my residence, there was a rehabilitation center. So the person sitting there, you know, I always used to go to my university to passing that place. So he used to say, hello, hi, this and that. But he didn't know much about what is the purpose of that rehabilitation center. And you see, once uh, when I was coming back to Pakistan, so I thought that perhaps since we have uh, no, done a lot of times, hello, hi, so now I should see what is there inside the rehabilitation center. So I was surprised to know from the people there, ke, you see in that system, how intelligently they have built up the, you know, several things. So the rehabilitation center is one of them. So what I found that if somebody does a very minor crime, 
पाकिस्तान में तो ये है कि उसको जेल में डाल दो और जब वो बाहर निकलता है तो ज़रा और तगड़ा बन के निकलता है तो उस रिहेबिलिटेशन सेंटर में वॉट आई सो दैट द माइनर क्राइम पीपल डू लाइक स्नैचिंग और मे बी शॉप लिफ्टिंग समथिंग लाइक दैट तो दे डोंट पुट दम इन जेल दे पुट दम इन द रिहेबिलिटेशन सेंटर एंड वेन आई केम टू नो फ्रॉम दोज पीपल सिटिंग देयर दे सेट के एटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ पीपल हु डिड द माइनर क्राइम फर्स्ट टाइम दे नेवर डू द क्राइम सेकेंड टाइम सो यू सी दैट इज़ द ब्यूटी ऑफ दैट सिस्टम देन अनदर थिंग विच आई फाउंड दैट अमेरिकन्स हैव अ गुड सेंस ऑफ ह्यूमर्स देर इज़ नो डाउट डाउट अबाउट दिस आई हैपन टू गो इन यूरोप इन मेनी कंट्रीज लाइक इन इंग्लैंड जर्मनी फ्रांस इन अदर कंट्रीज द पीपल सीम्स टू बी वेरी ड्राई टू मी अनफॉर्चुनेटली आई मीन इफ समबडी इज प्लीज डोंट माइंड इफ समबडी हैज दिस एसोसिएशन विद दोज कंट्रीज द पीपल फाउंड टू मी वेरी ड्राई इफ यू सिट इन अ बस और अ ट्रेन और एवर इफ समबडी इज सिटिंग बिसाइड यू एंड फॉर लॉन्ग जर्नी इवन फॉर थ्री फोर आवर्स जर्नी दे डोंट टॉक विद ईच अदर But if you happen to be in USA, and if you are sitting in a bus or in the underground, so in few minutes' time, he or she will begin to talk with you. I remember first time when I was sitting with uh, some uh, no, lady who was much older than me, and I was that that time very young, 29 years old, and I went in 1988. <coughs> so. i was wearing some tie and coat and everything so that lady said to me immediately are you going to meet with your girlfriend so i said no no it's i am just going to meet my uh, friend just a friend not a girlfriend so you see that sense of humor actually is the one which is actually ruling that superpower i mean i'm not concerned about their other things which uh, dr saab uh, which uh, uh, sheikh saab has mentioned but my personal experience is that uh, that is also that is a living society livable society if you there primarily i am an engineer i am a scientist uh, computer engineering um, uh, i have done phd in computer engineering so i can tell you some uh, trends which america has set for example uh, people uh, used to have right hand drive cars earlier but they introduced left hand drive cars this is just opposite and they they tell the benefit of having the left hand drive car i want to go to into those technical details but there is a advantage of having left hand uh, left hand drive car then the electricity frequency we use 50 hertz they use 60 hertz and there is a big advantage of using 60 hertz frequency then uh, you know electrical switch when we have to put on so we have to you know take it up or take it down but in america you have to take it up to put on the lights and everything and there is a very very you know simple logic that the crawling babies always have a tendency to put it down so you see when the crawling baby is there and uh, so she cannot put it on she can put it off and there is a big advantage of it you just think psychologically the people the our small children who are just crawling and they find the switch so there is always a tendency to put it down so in pakistan put it down means everything will become on but in usa if, if somebody does this it puts off everything so that is more better and safer so there are many many things i can tell you i can write a big book <laughs> several pages of book so really uh, i have mentioned this yes very nice very nice. i will read that book inshallah i am i belong to a memon community so i am between in urdu speaking and sindhi you know i i can understand what you say and i can also speak with my when my mother was alive i was speaking in, in my, my my mother language so it seemed to be like i was speaking in sindhi so there's no not much difference the book the physical book has no replacement nowadays in the it world in the digital world we talk about the digital books but i don't think that uh, uh, people who love the books they will or uh, they they find comfortable themselves by reading the digital books it's always uh, the physical book which is uh, you know give a sense of reading 
and which gives a sort of pleasure because you can sleep by reading a book, but it's not possible. Maybe on the on the on the on the, on the mobile phone you can do this, but it's not uh, you know interesting. If somebody is a lover of reading the books, then uh, it is always he will uh, uh, support me. Said that physical books are always the books which uh, we should read, and uh, as uh, many of the scholars have said, readers are the leaders. So as much you read, you will lead the uh, entire world. So thank you very much to all of you. Thank you, Dr. Sahib. Truly said that books are the best friends and books are the true companions. So that's all from here. Once again, thank you very much. And please have a cup of tea with us outside this auditorium. Thank you. <laughs>